If you care about streaming, this video is definitely for you. My assortment of streaming equipment is actually getting better and better. I've started with this, that was a Lumix uh, um, GX80, which was serving me for a long time as my main camera, but over the time I got to like one brand. It started with this. This is Obsbot Tiny, a really cool camera with face tracking, which was released ages ago. And after some time, it got upgraded to this. I know it looks similar, but if you look very closely, you will see that this one has red ring. And that red ring stands for 4K, because it was suddenly capable of streaming in 1080p in 60 frames per second and 4K as well. But now, now that goes all to the side and I'm going to use it as a backup camera because there is a new Obsbot camera inside. This is Obsbot Tiny 2. And it also has a red ring and we already know what red ring means. Oh, trust me, it's a good thing unless you are Xbox owner, right? <laughs> The unboxing was pretty swift because it all came in this carrying case and I have exactly the same comments about it. It's nice and portable and it will keep your camera secure. It looks very presentable, but because it's fully molded inside uh, and you can't remove that bit, then you won't be able to repurpose it. And I really can't imagine anyone traveling with a webcam. So yeah, some of you folks will appreciate it for me. Not so much. But the main focus is obviously the camera. Now, the camera itself looks tiny. I mean, that's probably the best way to describe it because it's so much smaller than the previous generations of the Tiny's uh, Obsbot cameras. And I really like their redesign. But that's not the only change. There actually, there are lots of changes under the hood. But before we're gonna get there, let's talk about what can we see on the outside. It is still the same webcam that you know, capable of panning and tilting and following you around pretty successfully. As the red ring suggests, it comes with a similar resolution, so you'll be able to stream at 4K at 30 frames per second or um, 1080p and 60 frames per second, which is quite welcome. And on the outside, apart from getting smaller, more sturdier, um, it didn't change that much. We still have two microphones to provide you with excellent audio. We have USB Type-C connector at the back. Uh, there is at the bottom tripod uh, screw, so you can mount it on the stand of your choice. And the light that will indicate whatever mode the device is using. So that's pretty much it. Inside the box, you'll also find a new magnetic stand, which helps you to keep your camera in position, but also allows you to tilt the camera up and down. Why? There is a couple of functions that will require this, and we're going to get there in a moment. And that's pretty much it. Inside the box, you'll still get like USB Type-C adapter and the cable to get that connected. Obsbot was also kind enough to send me their remote, which is really, really good if you don't want to be near the computer and still want to have pretty much all of the controls for your camera setup. We're gonna talk about this remote in a moment. Side by side, we see the reduction in weight and the size, but that's not that has changed. There is also new sensory side capable of much better picture quality. Resolution, however, has not changed. Why? Given the new model name, Obsbot Tiny 2, I was expecting to see significant improvement in terms of resolution as well. Previously, when I was reviewing Obsbot Tiny 4K, I mentioned that it would be nice to see 4K 60 frames per second. Now, it's not the case with the new one, and there is a reason behind it. Now, all the processing, all the tracking and everything happens inside this camera, which means you don't need any software, you don't need anything external, you just plug the camera, it works via USB interface, and it, everything that is related to Obsbot camera happens within the hardware. And even some of my favorite standalone gimbal camera like this, this is M Orange slash 90 phone, which you can uh, take a look and watch there, the review for it, uh, has 4K 60 frames per second. However, tracking options on this device aren't available in that resolution. 
Uh, it's mostly because uh, resolving tracking and dealing with compression, saving the image, it's basically taxing on the hardware and probably would increase the price point quite significantly. So I'm not going to hold the resolution against the Obsbo Tiny 2 in this review because well, there's a lot of different things that this webcam does really, really well. I have to say that we got to the point where Obsbot Signy 2 blurs the lines between a webcam, something like this, and a dedicated compact digital camera, something like this. Now granted, this is twice the price and comes with the ability to exchange lenses and some extra advanced functions, but in terms of picture quality, honestly, there is really nothing to complain about. When the scene is correctly lit, the captured video features excellent details and showcases how well the sensor exposes object in that frame. This combined with fast focus assures incredibly responsive performance for your live stream or zoom calls or whatever you're going to use to uh, connect your webcam to. While grain in the less lit areas is still visible, the webcam does a very good job of making sure that the subject uh, is actually a well presented in an image and you're definitely not going to complain about it. So kudos for Obsbot team for working so hard to get it done. It's time to give you opportunity to judge the image quality by yourself. And there's a couple of interesting bits or uh, settings that you can actually do with Obsbot. So this is the full resolution right now of the Obsbot Tiny 2, and that's the image quality that you would expect. But it's not just image quality that has improved. Now in settings, you can set the different focus modes, focusing on face or whatever is closer to the camera, which comes in handy if you want to present something nice. See? Now it's this remote is in focus and now back to the face. It's seriously lightning fast. But if you don't want the camera to focus on random things, you can switch over to the face focusing and the camera will focus only on face. See? The same principle applies to exposure, which uses either global values for illumination or face uh, to calculate correct exposure for your scene. At this point, you probably don't look this impressed because I'm switching the feed from the camera that costs uh, over two and a half thousand pounds to a webcam that costs 269 pounds. So that's a big disparity. But just to give you an idea how far Obspot came in terms of improving the image quality on the webcams, let me run this little reminder of how webcams used to be and what was the progression like. So this is a sample shot on my Lumix GX80, so you could have a, an idea what the quality is like and what the audio quality is like using default camera microphone. So the camera itself is about £500 still, so it's a hefty expense if you expect this kind of quality. But the bonus is that you're going to get a replaceable lens, so you can get a different lens for a different feel. This is a potato webcam on my £2,200 laptop. Yeah, it's 720 and it's 30 frames per second and it looks absolutely horrific. But that's your starting point. From there, it's going to get better. So let's switch over to Logitech C20. And this is the webcam I've been using in my early live streams. This is Logitech C920 and you can tell that the picture quality is much better and the microphone isn't that bad either. But from there it's just going to get better. Now let's switch over to the Obspot Tiny. And now we are on the Obspot Tiny with the biggest advantage obviously being a tracking. So now I can track myself as well as getting a stream of 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now from there we can upgrade that to Obspot Tiny 4K and actually experience the stream in 60 frames per second instead. So let's do that. And now we are recording using Obspot Tiny 4K and that was the webcam I've been using the longest for my live streams and I was super happy. 
So you can tell that uh, the stream quality is much better. So uh, I'm going to be really interested to see how better actually the sensor is on the latest version of Obspot, Obspot Tiny 2. So let's switch over and check. And we finally here. This is the quality you should expect from Obspot Tiny 2. And I can already tell that there is more light going into the sensor. That's why the image is a little bit brighter. So you won't have as many problems using this camera in a dark. Now, the quality looks really good on that preview. And I can't wait to actually uh, get that into my main computer so I could compare. But so far, so good. And something tells me that the microphone quality is going to be splendid too. So you're going to get a sample right now. Uh, so yeah, do let me know what do you think about them, that microphone. Because I've been using it uh, in my live streams for quite a bit. And especially I've been using that camera and that microphone in my last live stream uh, too. So that's, um, well, that's quite interesting. No one complained about it. So it must have been good. A long time ago, I decided to trust Obsport cameras with the microphones and I stopped using external microphones for my live stream. It's a very convenient way to set up your live streams. And so far, I've received zero complaints about my audio during the live stream. So it does excellent job. And as you can see from this sample, the audio is pretty good on the Obsport Tiny too. I've mentioned that Obsport Tiny can work without any additional software. But you'll be doing yourself a disservice if you're not going to install Obsbot webcam software, which will enable even more functionality uh, for your camera. But before we're going to take a closer look at the software, I just want to talk about what the camera can do without any software installed. Obviously, it will work like any other webcam. No drivers are required. Just plug in and play, which is great. Tracking is also resolved within the camera hardware. So you don't need the computer support to have full tracking for your camera. That includes gesture recognition, which allow you to set different zoom levels and enable tracking remotely. And new are now the voice controls, which to my surprise also work without the software. So you don't really have to connect the camera to computer to be able to direct the camera using your voice. Hey Tiny. Track me. Sleep Tiny. But once you have the software installed, there's a couple of interesting things that you can do. First of all, the software supports multiple cameras. So if you happen to have more than one Obspot camera, you'll be able to control all of them from a single software point, which is great. The first thing that came to my attention were the tracking options, which we have new tracking options now. And those include some choices that I would never expect to see in a webcam. I mean, they all make sense now, but still. It's pretty creative. I completely understand tracking options like your face or your entire body, but having options to track your lower body, your upper body or faceless will definitely leave you wondering. More on experimental side of things is the ability to track your hands, which to be fair, it doesn't work as well even when I select the right, left and right hand. You'll have to stand probably at quite a distance from the camera to have this work relatively well so that's a mixed bag of things and two new modes one for the desktop mode which allows you to tilt the camera remember when i mentioned that there is a small plate that you can tilt so once you tilt the camera onto your desk the camera ai will do all the processing for you so you could present the papers in a natural way adjusting for the skew and perspective the second bit is the whiteboard tracking if the webcam detects that you are next to the whiteboard, it will focus on the whiteboard, making presentation much easier. So it's definitely aiming at professional use and a lot of you is gonna be really, really grateful for that. 
Apart from tracking various parts of body, there is a new improvement of zone control, which allows you to set zone controls in which the camera remains motionless, but resumes the track as soon as you leave the area, which is really handy if you want to present something, but you want to make sure that you still have the camera tracking you, so you don't get those micro movements that would follow you normally, uh, but the camera will uh, start to track you as soon as you move outside of the track zone. There is a lot of AI image processing going on inside of this camera, but there are options that hmm, left me wondering. Now, you will be able to select uh, altering filters like blurring your background or cleaning up your face a little bit, but I think going in a direction in which you can smooth the slider to adjust your body shape it might be a little bit more than I would like to see on the webcams. I mean, if it gets a shy people in front of the cameras to present for work, etc., I guess it's fine, but I can see this being abused relatively easily. I promise I would talk a little bit more about the Opspot remote. This one is for uh, Opspot Tiny Particle because of the options included. Now you'll notice that it allows you to actually select different cameras, so you can have a control from the remote over up to four different cameras and allows you to pretty much access anything you want from it. And it comes with a handy laser pointer. But one thing I was a little disappointed with, it was the fact that I discovered that it comes with a dongle and it's not actually paired to the camera itself, it's just a glorified uh, keyboard macro. So in order to use that, you'll have to have the software installed on your computer and macros enabled in the software. But it's not the only way to control your camera while you're being away from your computer. You can still use the voice commands and Obsbot Tiny 2 actually comes with quite a lot of different commands that you can issue to start and stop recording. Now you have the ability to use your voice to start tracking, move to different preset zones and zoom in and out on your image, which is very handy if you can't really go closer to your computer and do it manually or use other options. Voice controls combined with gestures honestly provide you with enough of flexibility to have this camera used in any situation. If you're unable to use voice controls because of work, you can s simply use the gesture. If you don't want to look silly by making different gestures in front of the camera, you can use either voice control, remote, or use the software. So whatever the case may be, uh, Obspot Tiny 2 definitely has got you covered. There is a one more option that I discovered while playing with the uh, Opspot software. It will require the software to be installed, but once it's installed, you can spin up OSC server. So what is OSC? It's a control interface that will allow you to build custom interfaces with something like TouchOS uh, to control your streaming setup. You'll be able to send the commands to your camera via TCP or UDP and enable stuff like tracking, moving camera to different position, or enabling various options. This is great if you're building part of a bigger setup and you're only interested in having a single touch control on a tablet that will operate your webcams, your lights, and just streaming setup basically. Now you can do it with OCS and there is a very handy uh, script that you can try without building the interface yourself from a scratch. Obsbot Tiny 2 is a really good webcam, but is it good enough to be an upgrade to the previous generation? Personally, I don't really think so because the Obsbot Tiny 4K is already a really good webcam. However, if you want to expand your streaming capability to have a second camera and, for example, use them with a single remote or with a single software, then definitely I would recommend you to look at Obsbot Tiny 2. But if you don't have any Obsbot products, well, Obsbot Tiny 2 might as well be your first product. You're definitely going to be very, very happy with it. And I am moving forward, going to use all the Obsbot cameras in my live stream. In fact, I already did that when I was building a robot, so you can have a look and see it in action in this live stream there. So if you're interested, Obsbot Tiny 2 is available for £269 right now, and there might be an additional discount in the description of this video. If you fancy a remote, that's another £49 to spend. Again, I'll link all of these things in the description of this video. Big thanks to Obspot for 
sending me samples so I could cover it and use it in my live streams. That's going to be super handy. And you know what's going to happen now. I do not have a posting schedule. So if you want to know what's going to happen next, well, you know how YouTube works. I don't have to explain you all this. But uh, follow me on social media, which I listed down below there for your convenience. If you want to get in touch, ask questions and see what I'm doing next. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. If you care about streaming, this video is definitely for... <coughs> oh, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat>